Ho, 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 and Merry Christmas. Well, not really. If you're not finding it very merry or even happy or any of the other characters from Snow White, in fact, you're finding the festive season really difficult to deal with, then this is for you. This is a Christmas survival guide on Speak On Stage. So thank you for joining me on the set. As you can see here, I've got the Christmas there, the Christmas tree all lined up. And just outside the window, you can see it's snowing here in Dubai. It's just the most amazing setting. It's amazing what you can do with a green screen. And today's show is dedicated for you. Um, if you're finding that the, the glamour and the wow about Christmas aren't quite touching the spot that they usually do, or maybe around about this time of year, you always find it difficult to deal with everything. You're not alone. It is challenging and it can be very chilling too. So let's get down to it. I want to share with you a number of things which will really help you to get through all this. As always, I love your thoughts, your comments. Tell me whereabouts you are. Tell me you're jealous of all the snow. And clearly, I'm on the inside of a window, so therefore, it doesn't get as cold. I can't stand the cold. That's why I've been living in Dubai for 30 years. And yes, this is Dubai. Is it? No, it's not. But it doesn't matter. It's a green screen. Trust me. Google it. Okay, so let's get right down to it. This is especially dedicated to you because it is the Happy Christmas Survival Guide. If you find it very difficult to get through this time of year, then I know exactly what you're thinking and what you're feeling with. Um, so it's Speak on Stage, as always, with me, Dave Crane, and we've got a special party lined up for you. I'll tell you about that in a few moments' time as well. But meanwhile, welcome to the show. Tell me whereabouts in the, in the world you are. Tell me whether you're happy or sad or any questions. Throw them at me. Now, here's the thing. Whenever we do go live like this, you might be watching the original, which is fantastic, then I can interact with you. But you might be watching it on replay, in which case I do go back to all the comments and I do answer to them. Okay, so even if I don't answer you right now, it may be that you're watching the replay, as most people do. In which case, uh, I apologize and I go... <coughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I'll edit it. When I won't edit it. So let's go back to the original problem, which is that when it comes around to doing Christmas, which is once a year for anybody who didn't know, now there's a couple of things. Not everybody celebrates it. So we'll be talking about that with more depth. But let me invite you, first of all, to a party, which is happening on the 29th of December. Uh, that's uh, from now. It's one, two, go to sleep, wake up, go to sleep, wake up, go to sleep. It's about four days after Christmas, just in case you're celebrating. If you're not celebrating, you're still invited to the party. It's for the Turbo Charge your career five-day challenge people there's over 400 people in that group on whatsapp it's absolutely free all you do is get your phone hold it up to your um to, to the qr code or to the wherever it is you see this and just scan it and then ask to join if not you can go to what it says here if you listen to the podcast which is uh, www. um bitly b-i-t dot l-y backslash turbo career challenge does that make sense? If not, it will be in the comments anywhere, wherever you find this. It's there for you to be able to find out. So we've got a big party planned for you, lots of crazy stuff. And you think, what do you mean crazy stuff, Dave? You'll only find out when you join us. Otherwise, I'll be giving away the other secrets. And then you'll go, oh, really? Okay. So I'm not saying nothing. So let's get down to it. And also, by the way, uh, between now and Christmas, my special gift to you will be, you get to see my comedy stage hypnosis show. I will be streaming it just for you to be able to go, oh, my goodness, that's hilarious. Dave, I did did not realize that's what you did and it is exactly what i do so uh, i will share that with you if you don't know what my company stage hypnosis uh, show looks like then uh, take a look at this You know, when I woke up, feels great, you know? So many things I did today. Uncle, what are you going to do, Mom? Blah, 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 blah. So that's what my shows look like, and I'll be streaming the entire show for you between now and Christmas Day. You just have to make sure. I'll let, I'll let you know the details, uh, and then you just subscribe so you make sure you get alerted when it goes live. If not, you can catch the replay. It will be fun. I promise you, you're going to have a lot of laughs with that. So let's go back to where we are. Uh, this comedy stage hypnosis show is there. Now, this is me going into ChatGBT and saying, Doing a, do a picture of me and my family. So that's meant to look like me. Not quite, but okay, I'm fat. I'll give you that. Uh, I've got the two dogs, which is 
snow and ash. That's not bad. But my daughter and my wife look nothing like that at all. I'm as a spare dog in the back of a car of a sled. Don't know what dog that is. And it don't think, oh, they've had puppies. They're both girls. It doesn't work like that. I've, I've, I've checked. I've, no, I haven't checked, but I know from the... Anyway, trust me. Uh, but that's the best that we could get from ChatGBT. I could show you the many different versions it came out with, of which none of the guys look like me. So either I've gone for a divorce, or my wife's made better choices. And the dogs... Just leave it. This is a picture you're going to get. Happy Christmas from the cranes. And that's what I'm going to say. So Christmas isn't easy for everyone. Let's get to the heart of what today's show is all about. I know... It's difficult. I've got to be honest, for me, for many years, when I was an entertainer as a DJ, then when it came to Christmas and New Year, I didn't really worry about it because I was always entertaining during those times. So what that meant was during the times that this show is going on, I'm playing music, I'm having drinks, I'm socializing, and I was generally away from my family. The reason I stopped doing that was when I settled down, had my own daughter. I didn't physically have her, but you know what I mean. I've got Maya. Uh, there are bigger priorities for me than entertaining people on Christmas. And so during that time, you get the chance to spend time with your family but if you live overseas as many people do then you miss your folks you miss your family and if you've been through the pandemic as everybody did um you either lost somebody or you felt that there was a gap between you and a huge distance between you and them um but also christmas you might not be christian you might not be celebrating the festive season now i know that the festive season means it's open for everybody to come and play but not everybody wants to and i understand it completely um so what i'm going to do is this session is really dedicated to anybody who's having to deal with challenges on the way, whether it's your actual first choice of spiritual system, or you've got friends or family, or just even a spouse who's celebrating and you're not quite feeling it. Or if you are meant to be celebrating it, but it's just not cutting the mustard. That's what today's show is all about. So let's get straight into it. Christmas can be brutal for many people indeed. I'm sure you're experiencing that. And I've got a bit of a sweaty eyeglass on. So I mean, just, I mean, it's just steaming up now because of the it's it's all done by condensation on the windows uh, and the fact it's hot next to the campfire. What do you mean by that, Dave? Well, look, look, I've got the windows here. I've got the um, the fire there, which means that these don't have windscreen wipers on them. Sometimes it just gets steamy. Capiche? Good. Let's get back to it. So. Christmas can be brutal for many people. Here's the kind of people that get really difficult for. And I'll go to a big screen to make it easy for you to be able to read this. First of all, loneliness. It can feel isolated when you're together with people, or you can feel isolated when you're own, on your own. Because the thing is, everywhere you look, it's pictures, it's images, it's advertising, all about a time for family to get together. And it's not always easy to do that. Or it can be that you're in a group of people, but you have an argument with somebody and you feel isolated. You can be incredibly lonely in a group of people. And that's not just a one-off thing. It could be something you deal with on a regular basis. So it can be difficult for you. Also, grief and loss is a time more than any time I think of a year when um, if you're missing a lost loved one, the holidays makes it even more brutal because once a year, you might remember what it was like with having them around. I lost my dad um, about two years ago, and uh, every single year on Zoom we'd jump on, because my parents lived in Leeds, my mum's still with us, and we're based in Dubai, and so we'd Zoom, so the last couple of years we've just been Zooming mum, and it's really challenging to keep the smiles up and everything, but we make it work, it's getting easier year by year, not that we don't think about dad, but just because we can think about each other, and we're kind of there to support and we do it all year round to make sure it works. But it's not easy because grief and loss can really hurt. And especially at this time of year when you know what they used to do when they were there. So I feel for you, anybody out there is dealing with the same thing through the pandemic or just because of whatever reason. And I truly get that. You might have missed, um, you might have gone through a divorce. You might be not with your family. It could be lots of different reasons for that. So I understand that. Next up on the list is financial stress. So many people go, oh, let's buy this for Christmas, ho, ho, ho. But the truth is, this year is probably one of the most difficult years, apart from maybe during the pandemic years for me, to actually get presents for people. Because things are tighter. If you look at the way inflation works, inflation is still going up wherever you are around the world. And uh, the amount of money that you get paid in your pay packet is less. In fact, if you look at your parents or grandparents, they were actually getting about four times the amount of money that you get now accounting for inflation because 
the things you could buy in those days for whatever money it was could afford a lot more than you can afford right now. So often you get a lot of grief in the house of being told by people, oh, why do kids nowadays work as hard? They're all lazy. You are working just as hard as they are, but your money doesn't stretch as far. So financial stress is a real challenge, especially when it comes around to this time of the year, because you're thinking, oh, I've got to treat everybody. I've got to buy presents. And you're probably thinking, but it's really tough normally anyway. Got bills to pay. Got the pressures of a holiday. Maybe you took a holiday or just maybe the electric bill is going to be really challenging because of the winter. There's many families around the world who are thinking, can I afford to eat, let alone heat the house and buy presents? So that might be the, th the case for you, in which case I reach out to you as well. And financial stress is something that can be very brutal. Family tensions. I'm not going to talk about my family, um, but there are lots of challenges <laughs> for mine too. You might feel it. And one of the things that I found fascinating, my wife was sharing with me or something, um, is the fact that, you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. You can decide whether to unfriend somebody or get closer to them because of the relationship you're stepping up. But when it's your family, that's what you've got. And sometimes it is really difficult and sometimes they're toxic. And it makes it all the more difficult because when you get together, unresolved family issues suddenly become really big and in your face. And they can be challenging, of course, they end up with people taking sides. And that's really horrible to have to deal with, especially when you're coming together just to chill out and spend some quality time. Then you've got unrealistic expectations. Oh, this year will be the best year. Then sometimes you find out it's not. It's just like all the other years. And uh, for various reasons, things can happen that make it really difficult. So I get all that. There's a couple of other things. You might be suffering from depression or anxiety or other mental health issues. You might just be feeling the pressure of having to work so hard, work extra hours to get the same amount of money coming in, and nobody's there to pick you up. And then somebody will throw Christmas at you, and you're waiting, where's Santa Claus? When is he going to come along and help me, make me feel better? I get that. I completely get that. We're going to be giving you some solutions to this in a few moments' time. Or you could be overwhelmed or burnt out. He's worked so hard, and you need to take an actual break. This is an actual truth for me, actually. I mean, I've had a relatively good year compared to previous years. It's the best year on record for the last three years, four years, because the pandemic was brutal. No gigs, no nothing. This year has been very good indeed. But what happened was... I'd kind of come to the end of my work about a couple of days ago. And as soon as we came to the end of work, I got ill, really ill. It's been like because the adrenaline of keeping working had somehow managed to keep all the energy up. And so when it came to actually taking a break, I was suddenly hit with flu. And I went down, bang, for about three days. Had to wrap up sweating, nose, everything, taking tablets and, and hot toddies, a lot of hot toddies, to make sure I was okay. So sometimes it can help you and sometimes it can hinder you. What I suggest you do is listen to your body, listen to your mind, listen to your feelings. If they're saying to you, you need to take a break, then maybe you do need to take a break. And usually this time of year is a good time to be able to consider doing that. Next on the list is this. So as you're preparing for it, you can also get emotional pain and physical pain as I've been experiencing. But also a thing called SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. And uh, that happens. Have you ever seen that movie, 30 Days of Night, where the vampires come and get you? And it's based in Finland, I think it's, or Norway, where there are 30 actual days of darkness. Uh, now, it's nothing extreme for most people, but certainly the winter nights can make a big difference for you. You can't go out to play, it's cold, it's dark early and it's dark late, and you see a lot less daylight to play with. That can catch up with you, and it can sap your mood and your energy, because people are just like flowers. When the sun comes out, you come out as well. And that's one of the reasons I've been in Dubai for such a long time. And yes, Dubai doesn't normally look like this. This is just me using special effects to make it look really cool and groovy. And this is my Christmas tree special effect. Look at that. Hey, where's the Christmas tree, Dave? There's the Christmas tree. There you go. And that's a picture of, what is it? Is that a burger? I can't tell. I'll have to zoom in and find out. Or maybe not. Okay. Okay. So there's a lot of challenging, challenging things that come from it. So seasonal affective disorder is another one. Next up on the list is this, isolation due to illness or disability. You might find that you don't go out at all. You can't leave home or because of the snow or the weather. Or for whatever reason, people are going out and showing you their holiday snaps. What a great time I've had shopping, going down the mall, going to some display, some festival, and you're stuck inside. You're not well or you're, you've got uh, physical mental challenges. That's not easy to deal with and it becomes more brutal over the Christmas period. And last but not least is this. 
cultural or religious differences, you may not be embracing Christmas, and nor should you be. Everybody's got their own spiritual system, or even no spiritual system at all. All are welcome, all are equal, whatever gets you through the night. Christmas might not be your particular one. For me, I like the idea of Christmas because of the fact that it gets me to dress up, wear this hat, share lots of cheer. I'm turning into Santa Claus, clearly. I used to believe in Santa Claus, and now I look like Santa Claus. Um, but also, I just like the way that this time of year is a reset button on everything that's happened, and you've got no choice but to jump in and embrace the love you have for everybody around you. That's the way I treat it. Everyone's got their own way of treating it, and not everybody is celebrating. In fact, there's probably more people on the planet not celebrating Christmas and the festive season, or the holiday season, or whatever you want to call it, than they actually are. Thoroughly understand that, and if you're not enjoying it or not thinking about it, then it's only two weeks worth of it. Okay, there we go. So therefore, what do you do? How do you get through all these challenges? So here's the thing. I mentioned this before, and I think it's a really important point to make. In two weeks, from round about now, it's a brand new year, 2024. You can go, Happy New Year! Or if you watch this in a year's time, 2025. Happy New Year, equally. And it means that all the stuff that's happened over Christmas, good, bad, ugly, whatever it is, will be gone. You can go back to your normal life doing what you do. In fact, you need to because you've got to work on what you're going to be doing next to raise your game and get yourself across the finishing line. Look after your family, look after your opportunities, look after your friends, look after your career, your business, whatever it is you're concentrating on. When it comes around to that time, it's time to let it all go. But you have got this little concentrated pocket of time where you can really embrace it and get stuck into it. So let's look at the way. Oh, excuse me. That's the eggnog jumping back in again. Joking, Swart. How to make Christmas much easier. 10 tips, 10 strategies, and 10 ways of getting success for you. Now, there are other ones available. I'd love you to put them into the comment section to share them with the people who might not be buying into the ones that I'm going to share with you. I'll give you the best I could possibly do just to make sure that we kind of cover it. Okay, first up is this. Embrace more you time. What does that mean, Dave? Embracing more you time means indulging in activities that you rarely have time for normally, but you actually love. That means taking a book out, reading a book you've always wanted to do, have a long bath where you just chill out, put bubbles in. Hopefully the bubbles will come from putting soap in, not because, you, well, you can do what you want. It's your bath. <laughs> Don't invite anybody in after you. <laughs> if you make your own bubbles. Um, get a hobby that you're waiting to do for ages. It could be drawing. It could be cycling. It could be something active, interactive. It might be connecting. I don't know what it is. Whatever hobby you've been thinking of, you can get into it. Or do something really special like this, taking a pause. What's that pause about? Take a two-minute pause every single day where you just absorb being you. Just enjoy the world for what it is. And you really need to do this. Do it every single day, not just because I'm saying doing it as a way to alleviate Christmas. But life is majestic. People are fantastic. You are brilliant. But if you work too hard or you move too fast, you never get a chance to appreciate it. There's a feeling you get when you're hungry, and that lets you know that when you do eat, you feel even better. There's a feeling you get when you're sad, and that means that when you are happy, you'll know the difference. Take two minutes a day just to pause and experience what that should mean for you. Does that make sense? Good. All right. Next on the list is this. Connect virtually. Now, you've probably already done this during the pandemic. We all got a chance to use Zoom and other different things like that. When you're on Zoom or, or Google Meets or Teams or any other platform for doing it, WhatsApp's got one as well for videoing people, you can do tons of things. You can open Christmas gifts together. That's what we do with Granny. Um, she's got them in a box. She's not allowed to touch them. And if she's, if she's cut those strings on it, I'll go bonkers. Um, you can open gifts. You can share stories with them, and you should do. You can play online games or even watch a movie together. Or watch your favorite TV show together. You can stream it and spend that quality time. Even distance doesn't make that much of a distance or a difference. Uh, he said getting tongue-tied a little bit. If you allow yourself to use the tools that we have nowadays to fix it. So if you're wondering about somebody's miles away, plan now to get to a space where you can spend quality time through whatever system it is, through your phone, through your, your laptop, through whatever it is, your streaming device, to spend some quality time. Even invite people together. 
We're going to do a couple of things. We're going to have a special Christmas party for all the turbocharge or career people, all the 400 people being invited. I'm not sure how many are going to turn up, but it's like a big game show. It's going to be crazy. And I'm also having a get-together with all my old friends from the last 30, 40 years. It's true. We're going to jump onto a Zoom call. We're just going to share stories that we'll never share with you uh, and just let our hair down. All of us are married or divorced. All of us have been through challenges, good, bad, and ugly. All of us are gray. And all of us really care about each other. And the big thing about it is the fact that after 30 years of knowing somebody, then there's nothing that they can say that will shock me. And there's nothing that they can say that will stop me caring about them as a human being. You will have friends like that. Get them together in a WhatsApp group. Plan a time for you to connect virtually and have that quality time together. I promise you, it will be amazing for you. And then once you put them in a WhatsApp group, you can continue to chat with them and share ideas, stories, photos, and have them as a support group as well because we all need it. Believe you me, everybody needs it. All right, next up is this. You can volunteer to help more people just by giving back to your community. That could be reaching out or visiting your local community, your local shelter, food bank, or community center. You could volunteer to be a Samaritan or somebody who takes calls from people. You can put it onto your social media. If you are stuck, if you are having a hard time, if you'd like somebody to help you, then talk to me. Most of the time, people just want somebody to listen. They don't need you to be a professional counselor. It helps if you are. But you can listen to people. But it's very important that you protect yourself while you do this. Otherwise, you can end up doing what's like an exorcism. You take all the stuff out of them and you put it inside you and you feel rotten. I'm going to show you a couple of techniques now that I think will be very, very useful for you. If you do find listening to people, you love to help them, but you end up taking it on and you carry all their weight around and you feel incredibly depressed once they're finished, there's a couple of techniques. First one is this. Imagine that they've got a monkey on their shoulder. Right? I've learned this from a very a brilliant uh, counsellor. I said to her, how do you manage to deal with all these challenges from young people? And I was working for the Prince's Trust at the time, um, which is uh, Prince Charles, now King Charles' charity in the UK. They're helping long-term unemployed, ex-offenders, ex-druggies, whoever it is, get onto employment or at least feel more comfortable in their lives. I said, how do you deal with when people are telling you stories and the, the stories are horrible, brutal, and the, the, the crying all the time? I said, imagine they've got a monkey on their shoulder. And we're trying to give you the monkey. You just don't have to take it. You don't tell them that's what you're doing. But you can still smile and still have the empathy and the bond. But you just don't take the monkey. So you can visualize not carrying their weight. But you can still be there for you. Another one of, of way of doing it is imagine that they're writing down all the complaints. Crumpling it up and throwing it at you. And it bounces off you and lands in a waste paper basket between you. So everything bounces off. So you don't internalize it, but you're there in the dance experiencing it with them. I just knocked my microphone. Did you hear that? Apologies. So that's a really powerful way of doing it. And if you're finding that you're with somebody and you know sometimes somebody's really annoying, but you've got to be there and you've got to deal with it. It could be a member of the family. It could be, um, you know, a, a brother-in-law, a sister-in-law, a child, somebody who just comes along and just like, and you want to get it out of the way. What you can do is you can imagine subtitles. Right? Subtitles underneath everything you're saying to each other. But imagine the subtitle has a bad word at the end of it. One that you can't say out loud, but you can watch and laugh at. Have you ever watched a really funny movie on your own? And you're thinking, why isn't anybody here? Well, it's a bit like that. So the worst words you can think of, imagine saying it. So if I the worst word, so supposing it was water. Water was the worst word. Hmm. So I'm talking away to, I won't mention who, but somebody who I know, I'm never going to tell you who it is. And they're saying, oh, Dave, don't like your hat, don't like your beard, you're looking like you put weight on, you really should change your job. It's about time you did something more sensible. And I'll go, oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. I really appreciate you. Water. Now, they don't hear the water. I'm saying in my head, water, subtitle, water. But it makes me laugh if that was a bad word. It's not a bad word, it's just water. But you can substitute another word in there, and it kind of fills the gap. Do you get me? That's how you deal with it. Okay, good. Up next, so volunteering give back. Also, gratitude journal. It's really useful for you to be able to get gratitude. Now, you can write it all down. If you write it down and visualize it, it's very good. But every day, write down things that you're really grateful for because it allows you to realize that there are some great things in the world. as well as some difficult things, but there are some great things. Here's one of the things I've talked about before, and I think it's really important to share this with you. You don't have to be happy all the time. But you should learn to be content. Let me give you this example. So supposing you're watching a TV show 
or you're looking at a magazine, or you've been you've been told about somebody you've been on a holiday somewhere special, and they're on a yacht surrounded by movie stars who are having the best time in music and dancing and bikinis and the Bahamas drinking champagne and one of the top DJs is playing music. And you're thinking, I've not got anything like that. All I've got is a green screen room and a glass of water. You say, okay, but that's what I do have. How can I make this water better? Well, first of all, if I drink it, it does a good water job. I can make it more exciting by putting ice cubes in it. Or I could put some flavoring in, like Vimto or any of orange juice, anything like that. And it becomes quite a special drink then. And also, you know what? Once I finish doing this, I can do a podcast. Or I could, I could watch TV. Or I could go and walk the dogs. Or I could read a book. Or I could just chill out or go and have a bath. There's lots of things I could do which aren't as good, maybe, for that person who's on that yacht. But I don't have to be happy. I just have to be content with what I have. Now, whenever you're feeling sad or feeling upset, you don't have to shift it around to being happy. Just reset it to being contented. Yeah, I'm tired, but you know what? It lets me know I'm alive. Yeah, I'm hungry, but you know what? I'll appreciate food when I get it later. Yeah, I'm cold. My feet are freezing. But as soon as I put some socks on and I come inside after that argument where the wife may be asleep inside the car, then I'll feel amazing sitting next to the fire and just getting nice toasty tootsies but not cooking them because that would just be gross. So there's always a way to recharge yourself to become content. Don't have to be happy. Happy is a bonus. So going back to our original idea, which is this, either keeping a gratitude journal or just understanding that every day focus on something that you're really grateful for means that every single day the worst you'll be is content. And that's not a bad way to spend the summer holidays or the festive season either. All right, next up, plan a mini adventure. Do something different, a small outing. It might be an adventure that you do in front of your laptop. Let's have a look online. Let's see what I can get. Or it might be you decide to have a laugh on social media or you decide to go to a nature hike. Usually if it's something physical, it's better. Go and visit a local landmark and take some pictures, go for a picnic or something like that. One of the things I will share with you, and it's just something that just, it's affected me the last couple of months. You might not have seen me apart from when I'm doing my shows commenting much on social media and there's a very good reason for it i find that social media of late has been so toxic full of people faking how great they are and how wonderful and happy they are i just don't have a comment for it it doesn't make me feel necessarily better reading how successful everybody says they are when they give something that's heartfelt and meaningful then yeah i resonate with that but it can just be a toxic wave of how great everybody is. And I, I feel that sometimes I'm just as guilty as everybody else doing that. So I, I choose when and when not to go on social media. I will post my stuff to prove to my clients that I'm doing well. But when I'm not doing that, unless I'm helping somebody, I tend not to jump up and say things and skim through trying to look for some kind of enlightenment from people's posts. Because ultimately what happens is the algorithms are there to make people excited and make things addictive. And then they make you see more and more of the same kind of stuff from the same kind of people. And some days you need to get your own counsel. Some days you need to know that you're happy in your own skin. So if you're finding social media a bit of a challenge, you're not the only person right now. I apologize if I've not been commenting on your stuff. I will be back. But right now, it's nice to have my own space with my family, with my snow outside, walking my dogs, and just thinking life is all right. I'm pretty content. I advise you to have a think about the same thing too. All right. So many adventures are always cool. Start a new tradition. Do something you've not normally done before. That could be doing yoga. That's when everything breaks and you bend and you look like you're made out of rubber. Um, or special holiday themed meditation. Or eat um, with friends or family or on Zoom even. A really cool thing to do is just to plan to have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or eat some mince pies or whatever it would be with a friend you've not seen for ages. They can always find five, ten minutes online to find you. So book them. Ask them. Tell them, what this time can we get on? Have a quick chat. It's be amazing how quickly you catch up on old stuff. And if it's friends or family you're not seen for a very long time, you don't need to go back over your old stuff. You just need to know what's happening now, what's happening that's fresh, what can you catch up with that makes you both feel amazing. Or you can reminisce as well. Sometimes that's really perfect too. But get some quality time to do that. Start a new tradition, something you can do every single year or every single time you get together with people that you really care about. Next up is this, self-care rituals. What are self-care rituals? These are things that you do to make yourself feel stronger and better. It could be you take a spa day even at home. 
where you put the incense burners out or you, you just chill out or you, you have a workout session or meditate or even just get a book or have some quiet time with some music. Just chill out. Get your Kindle. This is my Kindle. I already have a book that you want to have. There you go. It's my Kindle. Hey, look at that. It's cool, huh? And I just sit and I chill out sometimes on Saturday, which is my day off. I'll go and sit in a coffee shop and just get that out, grab a coffee, sit in wherever it is, order coffee and a cake or a sandwich, whatever it is, and just spend some time being me. Not dad, not husband, not dog parents, not son, not cousin. Just me. Find you. It's really important to do it. All right, next up is this. So self-care rituals. Be selfish because you need to. Because if you're not tending to yourself, then you can't look after anybody else. I've said this before. You know when you're on a plane, if you get a chance to fly. And in the old days, they used to have the air stewardesses going, if you're here, or here, or here, um, the, the fire exits are there. And also if an oxygen mask comes down, then what you've got to do is pop it on yourself before you attend to anybody else. Why is that? Because... If you're carrying kids, or you're with your kids, and you put an oxygen mask on them first, and there's smoke in the cabin, if you're flying, by the way, I'm really sorry for you doing this, but it makes sense. Um, if you put it on your kids first, and you pass out, your kids can't get you off a plane. You're too heavy. But if you put it on you, and you can breathe, and you take a big deep breath before you need to do anything, you can put your kids over your shoulders, unless you've got 20 kids, in which case, it's not great. Put them in the trolley, move all the drinks out of the way, push them. Um, and you can get off a plane and look after them there. So it's a really important thing that I say on a plane. It's a really important thing for you. Look after yourself first because you can't tend to everybody else if you're feeling bruised or wounded or burnt out. Once you feel better and you've made yourself look content and happy, then you've got more to share with everybody else. I hope this makes sense to you. By the way, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you catch up with our Friday family, which means on a Friday, uh, I get together with a lot of people on a LinkedIn live audio session, and we just share stories and help each other. We talk about branding and speaking, all the usual stuff, but also a lot of the stuff is about wellness and mindfulness and how to experience a better, happy life which is often the thing that gets missed out when you're looking at doing the stuff on social media. So it's kind of important. So um, self-care rituals are good. Next up is this, uh, mindful gift giving. Gifts for well-being. That means meditation apps. Many of them are free, just to be able to share with people. Uh, essential oils or a self-help book. Some of these are digital. Some of them are just well-meaning. Sometimes sending a message to somebody or making a little video that you can send to people. These things are free. The gift that you send doesn't have to be expensive. And for many people, they're not bothered about that. If you get as old as me, you've got everything you need. You just want to make sure that everybody else is happy. And then you can be happy on the back of that. You don't need any presents necessarily. In fact, what I'm going to do with this broadcast is in the comment section, I'm going to give you a special gift. I'll give you a link to go and download an audio. That's going to be a hypnosis audio to help you to be able to do amazing stuff. Okay, so I'll give you that as a gift. Remind me if I haven't done it and put it into the comment section just so I make sure that I do that for you. Next up is this, decorate your space. Lift your mood. So wherever you are, make sure you do something with it. Now, here's the thing. Right now, you can see I'm in this wonderful Christmas setting. And you're thinking, yes, but Dave, normally it looks like this. I'm going, yes, I've redecorated it. This is real. Now shut up. You're near the window, Dave. Yeah, I know I'm near the window. That's why it's like this. It's nice and, uh, and snowy. But earlier you were somewhere else. You were in a different coffee shop. I was never in a different coffee shop. I was never here. I've always been here. But that's your set, Dave. That's your late night TV set. Yeah, I'm saving it up for when I do a special show. Speak on stage game show. What's going to happen there, Dave? I can't tell you about it yet. It's a surprise. Well, tell us, Dave. No, I don't want to tell you anything. Let's just go back to here and start again. Deep breath. So decorate your space, whatever it takes. Make sure you've got little things that can go a long way. It might be a little bit of tinsel. It might be just, I don't know what it is. Clean the place up. You don't have to celebrate it being a Christmassy person, but it would be nice if you get something simple that makes you feel better. Maybe draw a picture, stick it up. Or even better, go online and get, um, what do you call them? Get a screensaver of Christmas and put it onto your laptop or put it onto your phone. So you've got all this kind of stuff going on in the background. That's what this is. This is just a mood. You can get them on YouTube and they're absolutely free. So do that. Make sure you still feel better. It's so easy to do too. All right. Next up. So if you decorated your space, seek professionals. Here's the thing. This is the final part for today. If you are finding it really difficult and you want to get help, go and ask. I know it sounds really ridiculous. Why would I tell anybody there's stuff going wrong? 
Well, because you're not the only one. Everybody feels it. You see me. I'm making all these broadcasts every week. There's a new podcast. I share stuff. And hopefully it's funny and it makes you happy. But I went through depression and anxiety. When I lost my dad during COVID. When I lost my job for two years as an entertainer and speaker because I couldn't leave the house. Do you think it was easy? No, it wasn't. It was difficult. And bit by bit, I'm scraping it all back. Now, I'm a lot better than ever been before. But that doesn't mean that I wasn't going to reach out for help. And I did. Thank you, Ray, by the way. I've reached out before to people, to friends, to family, to those who were there who I believe could help. There's no shame in it at all. The world is more broken than it's ever been before. And one of the pandemic things that happened in the first few months was everyone started caring for each other. And then after that, many people went back to work as normal and just forgot about everybody else who was still suffering. And they have forgotten it even now. And in many ways, the world is even colder and harder and more brutal than it's ever been before. It's harder to connect to your neighbours and to your staff when you never physically see them anymore. So there's nothing wrong with saying, I'm not happy. I find it really difficult and reaching out for people. If you want to reach out for me, reach out for me. I'm here. I'm here all the way through Christmas. Whatever I can do to help, I will do. Okay? You're not alone. Feel free to DM me or leave a message in the comments and I'll find somebody who can help you if I can't help you with the problem as it is. Life's too short and we deserve better. You deserve better. So that's it. That's my 10 points. Have a quick look at this. Embrace your t the you time. Connect virtually with people. Volunteer and give back to others. Have a gratitude journal. The gratitude journal is there to allow you to know that you are doing okay and you are content and everything is all right after all. Plan a, milli a, a mini adventure, not a milli adventure, not a milli is. Start a new tradition for yourself. Do lots of self-care rituals that make you happy. Give mindful gifts to people that make them feel happy as well. Decorate your space so you can feel that you're doing something different from what you've normally done to lift your mood. And last but not least, ask for help. From those that you love or those that you don't know, there's always somewhere you can go. If you don't know and you're saying, but Dave, I don't have access to something like that, go on Google, go online, ask a friend, ask somebody you know. If you're on your own, there's always somebody who can connect with you somewhere who's going to make you feel better. So that being said, that brings us back to kind of the end of the show. So that's our happy Christmas survival guide. Please share it with people who you know are going through a hard time. And please leave thoughts and comments. It's not the show I was planning to do. I was planning to do something different today. Uh, but I'm going to do that not as a podcast because I'm going to give you my stage hypnosis show uh, as a special gift that you can watch. Any questions you've got, leave them there. And I'll make sure that I answer them. If you've got any questions, I'll go through them now. Uh, or at least because of the timing, it takes a little bit of a lag for your questions to come through. I will come back to answer your questions. Just put them into the comment section or message me directly. I'll help you wherever I can. So look out for our Comedy Stage Hypnosis show. And you're probably saying, Dave, well, what's all that about? What will the show look like? Well, I'll give you a little hint of one of the shows that I did before. I'm going to give you a full show between now and Christmas for you to watch. A full hour and a half of comedy like you've never seen it before. This is when I was doing a show in Monte Carlo in Monaco a few years ago. Two people who are getting married in the very first ever experience of intergalactic marriage. What's your name? The name is You can speak English as well. So what's your name in English? Tomasz. Tomasz. Okay. What's your martial name? Shinomar Karatekipo. And uh, in Martian, um, what is it you're doing on Mars? Mm, okay. Now, if I can get you to stand here, because I need you to translate for me. You have this beautiful Martian wife. What's her name? Anna. And you go to Mugushi. So, um, you're gonna get married. Obviously, how long have you been together? In English? Twelve years. Twelve years. And so, why why did it take you so long to get married? Can I ask your wife? Your, your wife to be, why it's taken so long for her to accept, accept a marriage? What's she saying? 
I know. <laughs> She's using dialect. Can you ask your, your beautiful wife um, what it was that first attracted her to you? She created the Ooh. Je So if you find it funny, you see the whole show when we do it for you properly, and that's going to be live on LinkedIn, and I'll put it on the other platforms as well, just in case you're watching on something else like Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. And that just about brings us to the end of the show. I've invited you before, and I did at the beginning of the show, and I still mean it. Come to join my free WhatsApp group, and you'll discover loads of amazing things. We have a special party, an end-of-year party for you. It's called Turbocharge Your Career Five-Day Challenge. That's the name of the group. There's over 400 people in that group. I'll be waiting to join you. All you need to do is get this QR code code and uh, scan it. If you listen to the audio of this, by the way, then it becomes a little bit more difficult to understand that. Go to www.bit.ly, uh, that's L-Y, bit.ly, uh, backslash Turbo Career Challenge, one word, Turbo Career Challenge, that's one word. So www.bit.ly, Turbo Career Challenge, and that's where you come to meet us. If not, pause this picture now or take a screenshot and then you flick it with your fingers, you get that yellow whack-a-mole type button and then you can press that and it opens up the page for your WhatsApp feed to be able to do that. If you don't have WhatsApp, then you're on your own. I can't really help you. And so there you go. So that's it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you got a lot out of today's show. And remember, this is all about making sure that you have a really effective uh, and wonderful festive season. If you're not celebrating it, then I understand that as well. If you are celebrating it, it can be brutal. My thoughts, my love and my, my sympathy go out to everybody involved in it because it is a challenging time of year. It's not always as good as people make it out to be. And sometimes it doesn't even look like this. That looks pretty cold. And what I find really scary about that picture is there are no movements. There's nothing to show there that the sled's actually been moving. Have a look at it. There's no trail, which means it's been there for a little while. And there's a full moon. Make out of that what you want to. But regardless of it, whatever you do, we will be showing you the Stage Hypnosis show. This is Speak on Stage. I wish you all the very best. Come and join us on a live session on Friday. I look forward to catching up with you soon. Be good, be groovy, catch up, look after yourself, and all the very best from me and my family and all my friends to you and yours. I hope you're having a good time. I hope it feels a little better as a direct result of this. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, happy Christmas to you. In fact, I will finish today with my Darth Vader joke. I can only do it once a year and that's the time. Okay, right. So Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker are fighting with lightsabers, okay? So I should really stand up and do this. It might be able to zoom, zoom, zoom. Imagine there's a lightsaber. This pen is a light. Is a very rubbish light. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay, so they're fighting, and uh, as they're fighting, Luke's fighting his dad like that, and he's like that. And Darth goes, "Luke, I know what you're getting for Christmas." And Luke goes, "Zoom, zoom, zoom," is ignoring him, just just fighting for his life and all the rest of it. And Darth goes, "Luke." I know what you're getting for Christmas. Luke's going, what? Stupid Darth Vader joke, man. Silly, what are you on about? And, and Darth again goes, Luke, I know what you're getting for Christmas. And Luke goes, ah, okay, I'll go with this. How do you know what I'm getting for Christmas? And Darth goes, I felt your presence. It's a joke about um, the Force in Star Wars is they feel the presence of somebody else has got the Force as opposed to the actual presence, which you could feel if you're next to a tree and it's his dad, but it's not. But it is his dad, but I've spoiled it. We've had 30 years to find out. It's... Uh... <sighs> Happy Christmas.